This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, we're back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, if you hadn't noticed. And of course, at 4 p.m. or a little after 4 p.m. on every given Wednesday, we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy, which is the longest running show in our entire <laughs> array of shows. Because it's good. <laughs> because it's really good. And, and then Sharon Moriwaki <laughs> makes this all happen. With a, She's the co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Welcome, my co-chair. Oh, thank you. And aloha. <laughs> <laughs> aloha. And special guest, we have Lee Steinmetz from the uh, county of Kauai. He's the transportation planner of the county of Kauai. We have a guy who works with him, uh, Alex Wong. <laughs> He's the historical planner. Say hi, you guys. Aloha. Aloha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, from Good Kauai. Way to say hi. From Kauai. Kauai. Yeah. Thank you for being with us here today. Thank and you, you for can tell us, us why they're here from Kauai, because they don't come here very often if they can <laughs> help it. <laughs> So why are you here in Honolulu? Gosh, well, thanks for asking that. So, um, yeah, we we came to attend the Hawaii Clean Energy Day on Monday, and um, I got to give a small presentation as part of that, and that was really fun. And then for the past two days, we've been participating in a statewide performance measures workshop, looking at how are we actually going to measure our progress mm -hmm. in transportation. What are the things that we want to measure? What are the goals that we want to set? And how do we want to evaluate projects? So we spent two days working with all the counties, with the State Hawaii Department of Transportation. Well, that, that's a government's to, meeting then. The, yes. the metrics the meeting. counties yeah. and the state. Yeah. 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 Well, I, you know, it's good that we get together like that and uh, that you find common denominators and common standards and expectations and metrics. You know, that's right. valuable. You, did, did that second part, the one with the government meeting, would that, that work out, do you think? I think it was really successful, yeah. I think there was a lot of consensus across the mm -hmm. counties that That's we good. weren't really sure whether that was there. And um, common ideas about what the goals are going to be and a lot of sharing of information with our State Department of Transportation that was super positive. I don't know, Alex, you want to add anything to that? Um, I, I think the outcome was, was very positive because when you work in a county on an island, um, you're, you're kind of isolated. And oftentimes the conversation kind of goes in a circle between all of the, the participants within you know the, the, the agencies. Mm -hmm. And it was really refreshing to see that the conversations happening on the other islands were very similar. Yeah. And their goals are very similar. Yeah. You know, Sharon, you might comment on that. The need to collaborate, the need to get together, the need to talk together, to rub shoulders, mm -hmm. have a beer, whatever it yeah. is, have a conference. That's right, the beer what, helps. How does that play now? Because um, you know, in the past, we haven't done that as much, perhaps, as mm -hmm. we're doing it now. I think in the past, we, we were trying to develop the momentum. Now we have a lot of people, in fact, a lot more people uh, than we had ever expected. So collaboration is harder, it's more challenging, mm -hmm. yeah. and yet it's more important because we can go 20 different ways and we won't get to what we all think we're trying to get to is yeah. clean transportation, clean energy, uh, and it's, it's a tough nut to crack. So we really need everybody's resources. And if we have the similar goals, and, and really this time around at the Clean Energy Day, we focused on goals and actions so that we could get some synergy and we could get the alignment so that we're all not working at cross purposes, but everybody can stay in their lane, but still can integrate where they're going so everybody has a part to play. And I think that was successful in the Clean Energy Day, um, and, and uh, Lee can say more, but it was to bring together this disparate, everybody mm -hmm. doing their own thing, um, pieces, and have people share what they're doing and have others listen to what they're doing and, and finding out, hey, you know, it's not too different than what I'm doing, and I can see where we can build on what they're doing and share. So I think that was the purpose primarily, but it was also the conversation. This is the first time we actually had an hour of talking to each other mm -hmm. and not listening to other people talking to us. Mm -hmm. And that was really, um, uh, it was very much the center of what we tried to do at Clean Energy Day. And we were very pleasantly surprised as well, and people were, that there were commonalities. There was common interest, and maybe then we can take it forward and do more 
because now we're all aligned to some similar mutual real interest together. So, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. And I don't know, you can respond to it as, ah, you're all wet, Sharon. No, it didn't happen. But, you know, what, what might we do to improve that? Because it's all about us working for us and doing it better. Yeah. Well, I would, I'd like to say something. Okay. Um, you know, what, what, what I noticed was, uh, A, we had some very good speakers, including Lee. Really good. Mm -hmm. Good mm -hmm. job, Lee. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank prepared, you. really well prepared, yeah. thoughtful. And, and sure I got the we, bell. Yeah. I went a little bit over my five minutes. Okay. Oh, well, we because it was, important <laughs> it was important information that's shareable and should be shared, and we let them go. Yeah. And I think <laughs> the presentations were, for the most part, really excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, um, you know, the, the charrette kind of thing that happened with all the people talking to each other, that was valuable and the closing conversation where our two special guests from the mainland, uh, Craig uh, Dirksen from Portland and uh, Eric uh, Sun Sunquist from the University of Wisconsin, um, where they you know, answered questions and uh, expressed themselves. That was pretty valuable. But what I get out of this is that Clean Energy Day is more than the sum of its parts. It's more than just you know, hearing out people and talking to them. It's, that, it's familiarity. You know, one of the comments uh, that I made yesterday was, uh, uh, Monday rather, yesterday. Monday. Monday. Today. Seems Today's <laughs> Wednesday. Seems <laughs> it's a continuum this week. <laughs> it has been. Is that we're all getting old together. And what I mean by that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> except Alex you. Alex might take issue with that. Except yeah. you, Alex. You're not and we getting... do bring in new blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We have to have that. Yeah. But, but the point is that we are familiar with each other. We know each other. We can pick up the phone. We can share. Um, we can think of the other guy when or girl as we are moving forward on a given path. And so we can, we can be inclusive and collaborative all the way. Um, and, and that's what Clean Energy mm -hmm. does, really. Mm -hmm. It's relentless. Every year, mm -hmm. Clean Energy Day, um, and every year people get together and break bread and talk to each other and mm -hmm. compare notes. And I think that sort of bonds up a community mm -hmm. which is all invested in trying to move clean energy and clean transportation ahead. So I, I found that uh, remarkable and touching, actually, on Monday. Yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is, is we all growing old together. It's true. And, and it is a community, but it's, an ex and it's, an, it's not an exclusive community. It really is inclusive. We like to bring new people in, new blood, new ideas. And so when we have the camaraderie, it, it really is shoulder to shoulder, and, and new people have good ideas, and it gets incorporated. Yeah. And I think... Um, Craig said something about, you know, it's, it's really when we look at transportation, right? in fact, for anything for that matter, uh, it has to be inclusive. So he says, you know, they have the, it's not just the bicycles, or it's not just it, the cars and fighting each other. It's how do you make room for everybody to use the streets, to use our public facilities? Yeah. And I think that's the challenge of all of us needing to bring everybody along. It's very complicated, mm -hmm. and that's why it's been kind of behind the curve. And I, you know, I applaud you, Sharon, for you're on it. You're on transportation. You're never going to let it go. <laughs> she makes so many programs over transportation. We need <laughs> and, to talk and, about it. And we're always saying, <laughs> no, we were well, further along this year. We yeah. are further, much further along. Thanks but to I think, oh, <laughs> I think, you know, I think that is a challenge, and it is. It's much more complicated than some of the other sectors. Like if you're going to talk about electricity. You can talk about conservation and you can talk about fuel. And a lot of the other sectors are the same, but when you get into transportation, it's so many moving parts. As it were, right. yeah, moving parts that you really have to think about and it's right. and it's it is more complicated. Yeah, it was brought home to me when um, um, what's his name? Eric uh, Sunquist uh, brought out those uh, GPS maps. Mm -hmm. um, to show that they had analyzed uh, the different access time between each point on the map um, in a given mm -hmm. community, and, and there's a lot of points on the map. And so he evaluated the connection point between mm -hmm. each point and all other points. <laughs> this is pretty complicated to see what the flow was, what the accessibility was. And I think mm -hmm. with technology today, you can do that, but I also think you have to do that Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're going to be uh, efficient about it. And you're able to do it more because of technology, because you know, all of the software that's being developed right. that enables you to do that. But it's using that to a good purpose. So I think it's 
the connection between what are our goals and why are we doing it, and was it is it really helping people, and then putting that technology to work for us. Yeah. So Lee, uh, give us a handle on what is plan what is going on in planning in Kauai, and how far you've gotten down the path, and what we can learn from you. That's called a multiple compound question. <laughs> <laughs> but but he needs to tell us from whence he's come because they got the transformation awards last year for yeah, the plan. Thank you so much. So I remember. You know, and, and yeah, Mayor yeah, Carvalho yeah. was yeah, there last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Made it a very was a very nice speech. That yeah. was a wonderful honor yes. for us. So yeah. thank well, you for Well, thank you for the work that. you've done. And so we don't want to hear the plan. We want to know what's happened what's since, happened since the plan. Yeah. So just to back up for a minute on the issue of transportation and clean energy and some of the things that we're working on in Kauai is and this was something that was really different this year at Clean Energy Day. And again, I think it was the number of the different people who came and mm -hmm. the group that was there. But um, a lot of times, like other sectors, the conversation has been about fuel type. And in the transportation case, like shifting to, elec to electrical, electric vehicles or hydrogen or some type of clean fuel. And that is very important in one component. But when you look at our transportation picture as a whole, we have a lot of other issues to deal with, like congestion and and the issue of access of how do people get around and is it equitable for everyone mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to get around. Like mm -hmm. those are other key mm -hmm. transportation issues. And the issue of just looking at fuel type doesn't get us there. It doesn't resolve those other issues. So on Kauai, we're really looking at, at multiple things mm -hmm. in, in addition to that. And I'm not going to talk about those because those are already talked about quite a bit. But we're also looking at things like how can we make sure that everybody has access to transportation and what choices do they have? So sometimes we talk about this as mode shift or thinking about getting people to have the choice if they don't want to drive to be able to walk or ride a bike or take transit. So developing our transportation mm -hmm. system to think about all these different modes of transportation and how they, mm -hmm. how they work together. And, yeah. and as well as doing a slice and dice on the whole community just the whole society is, is at issue because right. we're in a transformative mode. You know? P.S., um, your remarks uh, in detail, um, we have it on tape, and we're making an OC16 show, which we'll play oh, next great. week. Okay, so you'll see yourself again <laughs> and again, again, and again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> But we're also putting it on our website, so we'll have the whole video of your presentation so that if you want anybody to... You know, from Kauai to see what you uh -huh. did or beyond. Yeah. Um, it's going to be there for posterity. <laughs> so, Alex, you were there yesterday. And before we go to the break, I'd like to get your take on how it went and what impressed you and, and what, um, you know, what is important about Kauai's experience. Because, after all, Kauai is Honolulu's laboratory. <laughs> what you guys do over there is in a sort of a smaller <laughs> market. That's true. And maybe a more pure market. What you learn, we need to know about because That's we can right. use those you lessons lead the way back. For us. I mean, there are advantages of being small mm -hmm. and being able to. Te it's easier to test things. Mm -hmm. There's uh, less bureaucratic things that have to happen, and I think we're going to hear from our mayor later. Yeah. But we're also really blessed to have a, a, a mayor who has really strong leadership and really believes in a lot of, of these yeah, things. Yeah, we want to talk to him. Yeah. yeah. So, Alex, Alex. Uh, what are your impressions then? Um, I really appreciated the. The technology that was utilized yesterday, the the SIFT, the SIFT, Live the, SIFT. Yeah, meeting SIFT, SIFT. Meeting that, SIFT. that was very cool. And I think, um, especially when we have things things in that forum, or even with the public, something like that could really facilitate the conversation. And just just the, the ability to throw ideas up there anonymously, I think that was a big thing too, is to just do it on your mobile phone and throw it up there without your name being attached to it. <laughs> you can say anything, anything you want. You can say anything you want. And, you know, it's up there yeah. on the big screen. And I think that was, a, for me, it was encouraging to actually participate and to yeah. put my two cents in. Yeah, good. Yeah. So what role is your role as a historical planner in the planning for Kauai? Well, um, I'm actually a utility player. Historical planning. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, county of Kauai okay. is a very small planning department, um, especially compared to the, the other counties. So um, as a historical planner, um, whenever anything comes through that where, where the, the structure is potentially um, his, can be deemed, his, uh, deemed historic on in either the state or the national register, um, it has to be reviewed by the KHPRC, our um, Historic Planning Review Commission. 
And, and that's unique to the county of Kauai. It's unique to the county of Kauai. Um, other counties uh, are allowed to have their own historic review commissions. Um, if you are a part of a certified local government that works with the feds and um, National Park Service, you are required to have one of those. And basically, it's a, it's a, it's a commission of volunteers from the community who have some sort of specialty or, or background knowledge on archaeology or um, architectural his, histor, historical architecture or um, architecture in general or even just the history of the, the area, the community. So you're not going to build a condominium on top of the Russian fort? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> just want to be clear about that. For, for, so an example is um, like historic bridge. We have a lot of bridges on Kauai, uh, short little one-lane bridges, large bridges that you know are on uh, federal registers, and you know if it's historic, and you know say the uh, DOT wants to replace it or fix it, that project first has to be reviewed by this commission. Good, but you don't hold them up, do you? No, that is not our goal at all. <laughs> our goal is to help provide guidelines and aesthetic guidelines and also architectural guidelines to maintain the character because culture is a big part of not just Kauai but the whole state. And we want to, we want to keep that identity. Yeah, well. that's beautiful. And that's one of those elements that are so special in Kauai. You got your head screwed on right. Mm -hmm. oh, it's wonderful you. to see that. <laughs> okay, let's take a short break during which we will call Mayor Calvajo and get him on the line and we'll come back and he will be here with us and you guys can say hello. Hi, boss. We'll be right back. <laughs> Excellent. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so far up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Good. This is good. Oh, okay, we're back. We're okay. live. We're here, and and some things do in fact come true. So we have uh, <laughs> my co-host Sharon Moriwaki. We have Lee Steinmetz and Alex Wong from the planning guys over in Kauai. And guess what? Some some things do special come guest. true. We have the mayor, our our hero, Mayor Bernard Carvalho, on the telephone, and we can talk to him and say hi. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Mayor. Hello, everybody. Very happy to be. Uh, on the line with you folks, they're very excited for, because of the conversation you folks had. Just got back from Honolulu, so excited to just share a little bit. Say hello to everybody. Uh, that's great. 
So can you talk to us about your well, thoughts on, on uh, transportation and clean transportation in Kauai? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, we're transforming, right? I just say that, and Lee knows that we continue to look forward to transforming into walkable, bikeable, complete street, safe routes to school, light and crosswalk, connected kind of community, and giving our people of Kauai a choice to really get out of their cars and walk safely from Keiki to Kupuna. But what about people who still have cars? What about people who still no, want to the keep people, their cars? Yeah, no, no, and the people, the people have a choice now. You have a okay. car, we're trying to look at a more multimodal transportation. We have a multimodal plan in place. We're trying to encourage more shuttles on our island. We're trying to encourage more um, um, opportunities in that kind of discussions we've been having. And of course, in the green, where our bus services, we're looking at now the next step in our uh, new buses, electric buses. We try to look at mm -hmm. converting our methane from the from the uh, landfill to ah. our buses. Ah. And on the energy thing, we're going down that road. And I'm saying, come on, you guys, let's look at it. And that's still on the table, but we're kind of looking now at uh, electric buses as well. To me, we have an opportunity, not only on Kauai, but to our provide to really look at how we manage our resources, our energy consumption, and some of the great things that are coming our way. Whether it be vehicular, whether it be a multimodal, whether it be, like I said, shuttle services, whatever it takes to uh, really transform, yeah? So, so tell te Mayor, planning. Mayor, yes. tell, us, yes. tell us, is it just because Kauai is small that you can get past all the bureaucratic, um, no, 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 you know, <laughs> morass that to most me, of us have to go matter, through? <laughs> we, we, sometimes the smaller footprint offers more opportunity for discussion and details and all fine-tuning of a multimodal plan, if you will, a smaller footprint. And so we're so ready to take it to the next level. That's what I believe. So it's always good to look uh, collectively overall and then target the smaller communities on Oahu and the different parts of Oahu and different parts of the state and do the same thing. But people got to, it's an emotional part that is also a big part of this, everybody. So we got to really encourage our people, our residents to get on board and try it out and test it and it's okay to have a roundabout and a peanut about it and a walking and biking lane it's okay because that's transforming yeah and, and connecting community now so even our housing plans and stuff like this what we're doing in the future all involves connecting pathways walkways bikeways mm -hmm. and it's important i believe that we continue to think that way mm -hmm. um and, and energy savings of course is another big part that we're going into as well and i'm sure we covered that uh -huh. um, but anyway, from resource management, NASA resource management, um, clean energy projects, we, we're, all of our streetlights are LEDs now. You know, we work closely with CAJC, our co-op. Co and so that's a big, big transition already on co -op. Our food sustainability, our ag park, 25 acre ag park, let our people grow what they want to grow. And then we will help them and support them with infrastructure and all the other things they need. And let them take the lead in growing what they feel they should grow, and then create these sunshine markets all over the place. I mean, I can go on and on, everybody. Yeah, well, you know, it, it strikes me, Mayor, that uh, leadership. <laughs> yes. We we've been you know looking at Kauai for a long time and seen uh, yes. kind of a, a great attitude, uh, you know, a great sense of moving forward under you, I think, and and uh, that's that's about electrical energy generation. You know, now, yeah. uh, when uh, Lee Steinmetz came and spoke on Monday uh, at Clean Energy Day, it became clear that not only was Kauai a leader in electrical generation, but in planning uh, and, in, and, and transforming its society, um, you know, to a better multimodal place where people live their lives differently and better. And, you know, what, what, what strikes me is that we look at one thing, electrical generation, and then a little while later we look at uh, energy planning, or rather transportation planning, we, we find the same kind of success. So my question to you is, what is it in Kauai? Is it the water? <laughs> what makes this happen in both of those separate in, in, initiatives? Well, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say all of the above, but what it, what it really is, I'm telling you folks, and what I've learned a lot coming from uh, internally and then working our way up, is really truly pulling the right people with the right hearts, with the right souls, with the right attitude to the table and having a bigger vision and then everybody working together to get to the vision in the internal our internal government our planning working with parks and parks work engineers working with transportation and bus everybody working together I and mean, we all rally around each project instead of having it everybody separate 
So to me, it's an internal overview and overhaul, if you will, and just bridging everybody and bringing everybody to the table. Mm -hmm. And then it's having a leadership understanding to let our guys do what they need to do, report back in, you guys let me know what I have to do, let's go. And then providing the support that they need. So that, to me, is a big, big part of transitioning and where we need to be, not only here, but overall. You know, so that, right. before uh, we before I got on the phone with you, Mayor, we were talking about Kauai as a laboratory uh, for the state because of its small size and and the you know yeah. the the vitality that it, it has to approach these problems. Um, so I think right. you know my own view is that Oahu and the other islands actually, but pr principally Oahu, should be watching Kauai on this and should be learning. And that's why we want to hear from Lee and Alex here. Uh, yeah. That's why we always want to have you guys at our table. Um, uh, so we can talk statewide policy. Oh. So my question to you on yeah. that is, oh, you right. know, what, what should we be looking for? In other words, you know, talk to the people of Oahu for a minute. What should they be watching in Kauai to be most instructive in, in our efforts in Oahu to go forward? I think it's important to take away the thinking of, oh, Kauai is just too small, first of all. Like I said, we're able to really um, pull the right resources together. And I'm talking not only on Kauai, we've, we've thrown our net out to the federal government. We went to Washington, D.C. We, we talk story, we show things, we, we explain ourselves, we, we show the teamwork that it, and the effort that it took, and then bring it back home. And so that, to me, is a big, big umbrella that has helped us to continue to do what we do. But we move it to the next level, Oahu and the different parts of Oahu, I would target some of the smaller communities for I and build it and work it. And have people understand, hey, this is okay. This is great. We, it is okay to add this uh, opportunity for the community. And then kind of take it from there. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is the magic that is happening here on Kauai. Mm -hmm. And even pulling in all the different from PMRF and looking at the Kauai Community College and the health system, yeah. all the CEOs, we meet together, mm -hmm. all of us. From the so Mayor, Mayor Lee Steinmetz has a, has a question yeah. for you. Well, no, I just wanted to add yeah. something. I wanted to add something, Mayor, to what you're saying. And that's another part of what you've been really successful at. And that is sometimes what you call action with aloha and yeah. getting the emotional issues on the table first and working those out. But the other part of that is you've been, you, you talked about bringing the different groups together within our county, within the government, but you've also been, like you were just saying, really successful at bringing different community groups together that may have different right. interests, but, they're, but they work together. So bringing the health piece in, bringing the education mm -hmm. piece in. This is the community. Yeah. yeah, bringing economic development, like so that, so we're not just preaching to the choir, but we're we're always expanding the choir. And I think I think you've been really good at at developing how to do that. Mayor, we're about to we're about to close the show. We we're almost out of time, but I only want to say that it's been rumored that once in a while you actually get to Honolulu. And if that's so, Mayor, I want you to know there's a place at our table for you. And I hope we can connect up with you and have you come to our studio and talk to us directly in, you know, uh, in person. Can you do that? Can you, can you do I'd that? I'd love to do that. We'll schedule that lead, get it going. Let's do it. We're going to share it. Sorry. Yes. Done. <laughs> Consider it done. <laughs> done. Okay. Th thank you Aloha, so much, Mayor, Mayor Bernard thank Carvalho. Thank you. Okay. 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 Aloha. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Bye. 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 Okay, what a great guy, no yeah, kidding. He's always so like that. He's such a great guy. I know, the enthusiasm. So, so uh, uh, Alex, like what, that? What you, what's your impression of the mayor's comments here today? Oh, I, I always appreciate his enthusiasm and just the positivity that he exudes. Um, it's, he's a character that the, the entire island can get behind, you know, and he, he's good at rallying people. And he does that for me. Yeah, and I, I think follow him everywhere. As, as I've, been, I've been telling people on a move to Kauai just because he's the mayor. And as a political leader, you know, you need somebody like that with with the positivity and the optimism. Yeah, mm. yeah, great. Okay, Lee, we're almost out of time. I wasn't kidding, but I'd like to ask you the same question we asked the mayor: What should the people of Oahu be looking for, looking at wow. in the laboratory that you're conducting in Kauai? So, um, gosh, that's a that's a very good question. I think. First of all, I want to say we're all learning together, that we're learning, I mean, we're learning on Kauai, but we're learning as a state. We have a lot to learn from the other counties as well. So I think, first of all, just being in a spirit of learning is a really good place to be that we, we can all learn and, and advance. Um, 
I think this issue that I, that I kind of brought up of how do we not just preach to the choir but expand the choir is, is really important. That's something, honestly, that we're working on and um, that I hope we can share more with you in the next year or two because we're really we're rethinking how we do our community engagement. We're, um, as I mentioned, we're really trying to work on partnerships with people who maybe, you know, don't, don't want to talk about bikes or walking, but they care about economic development, or they care about the safety of their children walking to school, or they have concerns that are, you know, really good basic concerns of a community. So how do we, how do we look, how do we leverage transportation to try to address these other concerns that are really important. Yeah. And so um, I'm hoping that we can that we can generate more learning in that area. Yeah. So Sharon, he said that uh, you know <clears throat> he's he's there's more to come, mm -hmm. uh, and he's going to share that with us, and we're going to follow him. Yeah. You know what this means? <laughs> <laughs> we're watching you, oh, Lee watching and you. Alex. We'll be watching know, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can run, but you can't run. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just add one more thing to look at is the relationship of land use to transportation that was talked talked mm -hmm. about I think for the first time oh, at the yeah. at the Clean Energy Day and that's something else we're working on in Kauai and other islands are working on this as well it's not just Kauai it's really become a statewide issue it's about and, time yeah and yeah. it's it's a really important one and again I think we're all going to be generating learning there's a lot of learning going on in Oahu on that with um, transit oriented development and the impact mm -hmm. of the rail on how we build our communities. It's funny, we're finding ourselves. We're <laughs> we finding, are. we're redefining, we're mm -hmm. finding new identity, better identity mm -hmm. through the process of this initiative, both mm -hmm. in generation electricity and also now in transportation. That's and, our future. You're at the center of it, Sharon. That's why <laughs> you, all should, are. <laughs> you, should, you should tell the people what they should catch. Sharon's going to summarize this whole show. <laughs> she wrote, <laughs> not to it's put complex. any pressure on it's it or complex. anything. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> it's complex. But I think, I think Jay's right. I think what we've heard today and what the mayor is talking, it's all about people. Mm -hmm. And we forget that in the process of, of all of these, whether it's the plans on the shelf or the goals on the shelf, it's we're regenerating ourselves because we're finding people are changing, people have needs, but it's not just all for one. It's got to be the whole community together, and I think we're going to really want to hear from you on, yeah. on how you get the expanding the choir, so to speak, mm -hmm. as you're talking. Because that is what was happening at Clean Energy, happening today, happening during your workshop, is how do we align ourselves, but align ourselves with the right goals. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and I think you're doing it, and you're helping yeah. us do it, and yeah. I, I'm looking forward to uh, going forward. It's something Alex said about optimism. You know, what we have now through this, because of this involved, you know, in, married to this is a sense of optimism, that tomorrow will be better than today. It that's will what, be. That's, what, that's what's coming out. It will be. Thank you, Sharon Moriwaki. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Lisa Jay. Thank, Thank you, Alex Wang. Aloha. Great Thank to talk you, to you guys. Aloha. Thanks, Thanks for right. coming by. Aloha. Aloha, Aloha. Aloha Mayor. <laughs> <laughs>